What's up, everybody? I'm Chris with Profoto, and this is Geared Up. It's our weekly live broadcast where we talk about lighting, uh, from gear to image breakdowns. We compare things, which is what we're doing today. Uh, we just have fun talking about lighting, learning some new stuff, answering your questions along the way. Today, I don't know if I'm gonna actually make anybody upset. I'm not trying to make anybody upset, but I think a lot of uh, emphasis goes into or too much emphasis goes into the idea of how deep your softbox is. Uh, so today, we're gonna be doing a comparison. Shallow softboxes versus deep softboxes doesn't make a difference. Spoiler alert, nope. Uh, so <laughs> let's actually talk about, we're just gonna jump straight into it. We're gonna talk about why there's some common misconceptions about what the softbox is actually doing, uh, how uh, those softbox characteristics can be achieved, uh, but generally how they're not being achieved in the way that people use them. So I'm gonna flip around a soft box so you can see what we're talking about. We're gonna go right now. So today we're gonna be using um, the soft zoom reflector 120, roughly four feet. Uh, and then we're gonna be using the RFI four foot octa just to keep things a buck, right? Just to make sure that we're comparing apples and Apples. One of them just might be a Granny Smith. Uh, no, let's just stay here at the Super Bowl. I'm just gonna turn. I just gotta. I have a a pack in the way, so it's gonna fight me a little bit. So let's just do this. I'm just gonna turn it here. So, so what we're talking about right here is the depth of the softbox. I don't know. Can they see this? Okay. Yeah. So what people are talking about the depth of the softbox is actually how big the box is, how deep it goes. Uh, a lot of stuff gets thrown around there about like how the light is really long through here and it elongates the light of the softbox, but that's not how a softbox works. So the light source on a softbox is not here. It's not the light itself. Okay, yes, this is the thing generating the flash, but it isn't the light. That's not the source that's actually lighting your subject. The light source is the diffusion panel on the front. So if I have a diffusion panel on the front of a long soft box, or if I have the diffusion panel on the front of a shallow soft box, it doesn't matter how deep that soft box is. This is the light source. This is the thing creating the light on your subject. Now, if you were to start stripping the diffusion panels away and using this more as a large reflector, then yes, the depth of that is going to change the way the light looks. So it's not all doom and gloom whenever I'm talking about you know, the, your deep soft box doesn't make the light that you think it does. It can make a type of light that it should. It won't be the super soft light that's really even and diffused like you're expecting because you will have to remove the diffusion panels to get the look of that longer, more focused light source like a deep soft box. So again, when it comes to soft boxes, this is your light source. It's the same reason that whenever I'm talking about grids, I never, I, I always tell you, if you're going to diffuse your light and you wanna use a grid, you need to put your diffusion panel on first and then you need to put your grid on there. The grid needs to be the last thing at the light source because you still need to control it. Whereas if you put the grid behind the diffusion panel, the diffusion panel again becomes the source of light and you're gonna get a lot more light disbursement. So that same thing here with the softbox, this is your light source, this is what's making the light on your subject, not, not the light back there, not the depth of the softbox. If this is four foot and this is four foot, that light is gonna be pretty darn similar, uh, if not almost exactly the same. So with that being said, we're going to photograph with them. What we're going to do is we're going to start with it in softbox mode. Uh, I'm gonna move this out of the way uh, and we're gonna start with the soft zoom since I already have it set up. We're gonna start with this bad boy in softbox mode. So it's got two diffusion panels inside of it. It's got this front, or it's got a front diffusion on the front of it. Uh, I don't know if they, if they can see it with the five. Um, uh, yeah. So I was kicking around. So it has a front diffusion panel on it 
And on the inside, I'll peel it back so you can kind of see, just so you, we're keeping keeping everything fair. Ryan so, says, didn't know that about the grid and the diffusion. Yeah, so it's a fun little thing. We'll, we'll probably do another live on and talk about that in the future. But And so you can see there's another diffusion panel inside this bad boy talking about um, the actual uh, double diffusion. So what we're going to do is we're going to photograph this thing uh, in standard softbox mode, the way that most people use a softbox, which is double diffused. Uh, so we'll go that first. We'll strip off the front diffuser, just use the center diffuser. Amy and is asking a question. What do you mean by using a light as a large reflector? Oh, okay. So, so this is a reflector. This is what most people think of as a reflector. Cool. So I'm just doing this, but with that. So uh, the size of the modifier in relationship to the subject is going to determine its softness. Um, so for example, He's off screen Sorry, I'd like to just disappear and reappear. So technically, this modifier is softer than this modifier. Not by much, but it is because the size of that modifier in relation to the subject, this one's a little bit bigger. So if we take that same idea, because it works this way across the entire board, that is a lot. Actually, flip it to the <laughs> flip it to the, the the two so you can actually see the the size comparison. Much bigger than this thing. So it's going to give reflector qualities, like more of a hard light, but it's also going to have some wrapping because it's such a large light shaping tool. So it's going to kind of give us best of both worlds. I think you'll like the way it looks. It's pretty funky, um, like funky in a good way that you can do this with a, a light source. Same thing with that softbox over there. It's just a, it's a way to use your softbox that a lot of people don't think about doing. He's back. But we're going to do it. So <laughs> let's bring Kate in. Uh, Lightwise, just so you understand why I'm using what I'm using today, because we're talking about the uh, using this reflector and trying to use it completely in the mode that it's set up in. I'm using a pro head. I'm using a light with an exposed flash tube. Uh, you will see it when I take off all of the um, light, I'll flip it around to show you what I'm talking about for anyone who's not sure what I'm talking about. The flat front stuff is good and it does a good job of filling up the light, uh, uh, filling up the softbox because it's not, I think a lot of people, let me grab a B10. I think a lot of people when they're thinking about, ah, come on, come off the wall, there we go. A lot of people when they see this light, they think that it just throws light like this, right? And it doesn't. So here, I'm just gonna kick it on just so I can show you what I'm talking about. So if I hold it straight to the side like this and pull my hand out, you can see that right there to the side, almost 180 degrees, it's throwing light there. It's just not throwing it as powerful as it, as it is out here, but it is throwing light to the side. So we could use this inside the softbox, but the pro head is still more efficient. It's more efficiently throwing the light out to the sides. That's why we're using pro heads. So you can do it with the B10, not quite as efficient. For the sake of the demonstration, I'm showing it with you with a pro head. You did octa versus deep without front panel? Yes, we're gonna do all, all panels removed. So we're gonna go panel, panels on, mid panel. Uh, so sorry, we're gonna go double diffusion, single diffusion, no diffusion. And then we're gonna switch over to the four foot octa, double diffusion, single diffusion, no diffusion, and show you, and, and really look at the differences and see if you can even actually see anything. So my my guesses are not as much as most people think they can. So we're gonna push this four footer out of the way. You we're ready to rock and roll. We're gonna have fun with the image today too. Uh, Caitlin's feeling a little kicky. Yeah. So, so I'm realizing you're doing it. <laughs> I'm gonna feel real good. She's yeah, she's she's feeling oh yeah you know gonna you know? getting your kicks in for the day. So here we are. Hello everyone. So my camera is down there. You might actually be able to slightly see it. You can yeah. just a little bit. Uh, so my camera is down here, pointed upwards towards her. Um, camera settings f8, uh, 125th of a second, ISO 100. That's what I like to use inside the studio. Um, at least for this with the F8 yeah. because it helps knock out the video lights. Um, but yeah, so the first shot we're gonna take 
is the soft zoom reflector 120 in soft in a not bouncing into the reflector and coming back out like you would use with the zoom rod. The zoom rod is not installed. Uh, so the, the light is looking directly through it, just like a traditional softbox. So let's have Kate do this. You tell me when. Yeah, you know what? Okay. Actually, real fast, too, before I do any of this, let me get my light meter ready. Cool. Because we are going to, as we start removing diffusion, we are going to gain out light output. So we're going to have to actually pull that back each time. So uh, there's no, there's no real need to. So someone's asking, will I be adding a grid in this lineup? There's no, for the comparison of what we're doing, a grid doesn't really s tell the story. So thanks Ryan. Who, what was that? Pose. Yeah. yeah solid pose. Yeah, solid. I actually, I actually demonstrated it for her first yeah, before yeah. she did it. So honestly, mine was better, but there's no image. Uh, there's no image showing it. So, yeah. um, does the soft zoom internal diffuser have more spread because of the double dot in the center? So the or soft zoom, down? yeah. So the soft zoom, uh, the double dot in the center. And uh, so from what people are, from what he's talking about, and I'll show it whenever I take off the front diffusion panel. There's a secondary diffusion uh, dot inside the uh, soft zoom reflector, and it's just a help continuously cut down on any uh, hot spots that could come from shooting the light direct the way that we're doing it. Uh, it may change it because I, I don't believe that we have that in the no. But then again, what I what I also do can what I also will do is compare the two center diffusers. Maybe there's a difference and there's a reason that, that center one's there. Um, apparently, my computer has also gone into uh, screensaver mode, so we'll have to be alert of that. So let's do it. First shot. Boom. Okay. So this is soft zoom, double diffused, getting kicky. Three, two, one. Bop. Very, very cool. So that was that. It looks, it looks a little soft. On the it does look bright on the screen. Real hot. Let's, uh, let's pull it back a little bit. I'm actually going to measure it because maybe we moved in comparison. We probably moved. All right. Um, throw in your questions, and we will definitely talk about or yeah. uh, answer whatever we talk. Yeah. If you have any, you know, I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm going to use my app like a smart person instead of taking my yeah. remote. Yeah. Instead of taking my remote off. Okay. Stand by while I fiddle through I my. I put myself in that general position. Of... No, no, I just need you okay. to. I need you to be roughly where you're going to be. So let's just pull up control. is pulling up his pro photo camera yep. app. got to pull the app that way i don't have to keep removing my remote because chances are i would keep doing that all right cool so master control you're such a goose yeah we're up by about a half a stop okay so let's come down one more time okay I went a little too crazy. There we go. F8. Living the living the dream. I must also just double check that I didn't bump my camera because that's also possible. All right, we're cool. Ready? We good? Three, two, one. Perfect. Round the money. So there goes. Um, that is double diffused. So it's going to be a pretty quick transition, Kate. So here we go, single diffused. Let's get a, another reading because we're definitely going to gain probably mm -hmm. at least a half a stop. So where's your spot? Yeah, half stop. So let's go. Cool. There's actually about a sixth of a stop. There we go. Perfect. So here we go. Ready to get kicky? I am. Well, hold on, let me make sure we got focus. Three, two, one. Very cool. And then now, sans diffusion all together. And then I'll show you the dot that they were talking about. So. So we've Woo. gone from two panels. 
we're going to zero panel. So this will you'll this one you'll you'll start to see a lot more of um, Caitlin's shadow in the background because this is going to be kind of a harder light. It's very direct. This is the dot they were talking about. I don't know if you can see it's it. On the oh, it's on this one. It's over here. So there's a second diffusion. Can they see that? Maybe there it is. Yes. So if I hold it like this against the light, you can see it. Yeah. There. So that second little dot that they were talking about, that's just an added layer of protection. But I do believe that this dot here is the same uh, diffusion value as the entire center diffuser of the uh, RFI softbox. So. How do you work the light if the model was flipping her hair so there's no motion blur, a movement blur, and every strand of hair remains super clear? So you, my friend, are talking about something called flash duration. So in the world of photography, uh, the flash generally becomes your shutter speed. So I know a lot of people are like, oh, you know, if I'm shooting at like a 60th of a second, how am I still stopping motion? Well, if my flash is only pulsing at, you know, 10,000th of a second, that's so much faster. If it's only on for a moment. So that's how you freeze that. You'll hear us talk a lot about freeze mode. Oh, you just ruined the whole thing. Broke it off. Um, so we'll do another live about getting down and dirty with flash duration, uh, especially with freezing hair. I know we've done a flash duration where we drop, uh, stop droplets of water, but cool story about Caitlin, dance forever. And she's gonna hate me saying this, but we'll just make her jump or something. Oh, um, yes. So. Um, yeah, thank you. But yeah, it's, it's, it has to do with flash duration. So you ready to rock and roll? Um, yeah. So what size softbox do you recommend for making photos with soft shadows? So uh, how do you, so someone's asking. That's from Diego. Diego was talking about softbox recommendation for soft shadows. The bigger, the better is always going to be, and D Diego, it depends on what you're photographing. If you're photographing matchbox cars, then you can get away with a two foot softbox and you can get rid of all the shadows. If you're taking photos of me with my gigantic watermelon head, then you'd probably need something the size of the sun. Um, it, <laughs> it just depends. It depends on what you're, what you're photographing. Um, Tell me what you're photographing. We'll see if we can discuss it. The other big thing that you can do to, to mitigate some shadows here, we don't care so much uh, about the shadows. It kind of adds a little something, something to the image, but you could also just move further away from the background. So let's go one more time. Woo, whole stop down. That's a big, oh, let's go here. I was turning down the wrong group. There we go. More time. Love it. Nailed it, F8. Cool. So here comes. I'm gonna get super weird with my hair too. You ready for this? I'm ready. Three, two, one. Cool. Ah. You did, but I actually got all your foot in there. Did I show you? And you're in focus. That's good. You know. You only look marginally weird. I look a little crazy, but that's okay. Yeah. Cool. So that. We'll pull up those three shots here in just a second. We're gonna switch out these soft boxes real fast, uh, just to. Um, oh, Amy wants to know: Is this comparison also valid for umbrella depth, or is this only for soft boxes? So umbrella depth is different. Uh, I'm here. You're, you're talking to my backside. So <laughs> umbrella depth is different. So if you're using an umbrella with no diffusion panel on it, then no, the the difference in the depth of the umbrella matters because the umbrella is the thing that is the light source. Now, if you put the diffusion panel over the front of your umbrella, then no, it doesn't matter. Uh, depth doesn't care because again, the light source has now become the diffusion panel. So it doesn't really matter. You can use a shallow or a deep with a diffusion panel, you're gonna get the same light characteristics. So if you're using a deep umbrella by itself, yes, that depth does matter. So hopefully that answers your question. Yes. So, pop up as many questions as you can in here and we will answer. Instead of, okay. instead of rolling in that four foot octa, I'm going to just replace the light shaping tool. This thing's heavy, so I just want to make sure I don't damage anything. Yes. So, hopefully this won't be in the shot. Apparently I have a broom over here that I'm keeping. 
safe harbor. Uh, sure. Sure, that's what I do. Um, it's a mess. Cool. So again, this is a R5 four foot octa. They're not exact. They're not totally the same size, but they're pretty close. They're also not totally the same shape, but they're pretty close. Uh, that's why this is called uh, deep versus shallow soft boxes and not octas, because the uh, the other one definitely has more ribs. So let's go up. Starting with the diffuser. We're going. On yeah, we're gonna start with the diffuser on just because it's already there. It wouldn't make any sense to take it off and then put it back on. So let's get in here and measure the light. So basically, it should look pretty darn similar. Yeah, to and we're going to compare. Yeah, we're going to compare. Yeah, we're going to compare all of them, but we're going to definitely put the two diffuse, diffused ones up against one another because generally, that's how people use their soft boxes. They use it with the diffusion panel. What's the point of having a soft box if the light's not soft, right? Um, so, but this is just to show that the depth of the soft box isn't going to matter as much as you think it does when you're using it as a traditional soft box. So let's go here. Where are we at? We've got to bump up a stop as expected. Here we go. Oh, a little bit more. Here we go. Love it. You ready to get kicky? Yeah. All right. Three, two, hold on, get it focus. Three, two, one. Lovely. <laughs> You're so. I'm so graceful. So graceful. So good. Next level grace. And you do it in boots? You know. It's triple threat. I mean, I'm just waiting for the, what the third threat is, but you're definitely a triple threat. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Something. So Pete says no diffuser? Double diffuser. This one was yeah. this one was double diffuser. This so we're, double. we're taking off the first diffuser now. And then once I take and off I this. Oh yeah, there's the center diffuser. Oh, gotcha. Cool. So, just gonna make a pile of diffusers back there. All right, ready for the next one? Yes, I am. Hold on a moment. There's a lot of I'm I'm trying to banter, but there's a lot of testing and removing of things right now, so it takes a second. So, yeah. Thanks for hanging with. You ready? Let's check this. My guess is about to stop. That makes zero sense. Oh no, it makes total sense. It's a half stop. What? I'm such a, sorry. I'm having a moment. I was like, why did the power get higher? It's because it, it was supposed to. <laughs> Here we go. You quite yeah, there's a lot of stuff moving right now. Here we go. Three, two, one. Very cool. Now, and here is where I'm gonna show you what I was talking about with the diffuser material being pretty similar all over this unit versus the diffusion material uh, with the center spot. Actually, I'm just gonna bring this down. Um, let's see, Anne wants to know, is that light on top of a strobe or a hot light? Uh, the soft, uh, our, um, I'm using all strobes. We don't have, we don't have any, um, the constant lights that you see running are video lights. Uh, they're not by Profoto. We don't make lights like that. Um, and Jim is asking, is the video light affecting um, or negating any of the camera settings? Video light shouldn't be doing anything. I, I, so someone was asking, is, are my video lights affecting the image? Shouldn't be. Uh, I generally set my camera, <clears throat> pardon me, I generally set my camera settings to negate the video lights. So, and this is what I wanted to show you earlier. So... Oh, uh, Anne says no, the ceiling lights, so she was asking the same thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, the ceiling lights. So, so those, Sorry, th those are all my constant lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, the diffusion material, Caitlin, come here really fast. I think it's going to take two people to hold this. I just want to I just want to see if people can see it on the screen. So we're going to have to kind of angle. I'm going to have to angle this way a little bit. No, you pick that one up. Here, hold this one. So from the looks of it, yeah. So the center diffusion dot here on this one, this is the soft zoom center diffuser, they can see it. That center diffusion dot is the same diffusion all over this one. The actual outside diffusion here on this one is a lot lighter. I would probably say- You can see a hand through it. Yeah, you could see, yeah. you could definitely see my hand oh, through it. Where is this one? You could see it somewhat, but it. definitely not. As, so this is definitely thinner around the edges and your center portion here, which is double diffused, 
is closer to what you would expect out of uh, that one. So cool. hopefully that'll be a little bit more fair comparison. I know you're, someone was asking earlier about the dot. So now final image before we compare it. This is, and just, uh, just so you can see it, I'll swing it around. Bare bulb into the reflector. Now at this point, it's now it's just a gigantic four foot reflector. We'll see what the light difference looks like. Let's get it back up here. And then let's measure it and then we'll take the photo, then we'll compare it and then we'll get out of here. And pop those questions in. We'll yeah, go. keep asking questions. Yeah. We'll be answering them. All right, another half stop. Let's take it on a four for fun. Lovely. All right. The app is nice. I know people are talking about, I don't want to pull up my phone, but I'm in the studio and it's so much easier. Ready to rock and roll? Uh -huh. Three, two, one. Love it. Okay, cool. So now let me get my camera out of the floor or at least out of the way. All right. And let's <clears throat> <clears throat> and ask questions, ask away on the questions. Let's move. You have a class on how to use the light meter <clears throat> with the app. This is um, my first class and, I've, and it's very helpful. Thank you so much, Amy. So how to use the light meter with the app. Flip over to the, the five real fast and show it. So I know it's reversed. I know it's not in focus, but there's a, um, it's not really that difficult. So especially with the Connect Pro stuff where I can see the power number. Um, all I'm doing is clicking my, my light meter and then it, there's a secondary controls button down here that just has a trigger button. And then from there, I see what my power is and I just, I just slide the group that I know I'm working on group C with that light. So I just literally go to group C and I'll just slide the power back and forth. It's that simple. It's, it's, it does. I mean, we could do something deeper if you wanted to, but you could take the remote off the camera just as easily. I just, as I always forget to put it back on because I'm a numbskull. So the app just makes it a little bit easier for me. And you could also even set up an iPad and like have it off to the side and control it that way too. Uh -huh. So and let's see here. Does the photo provide any adapters for the Bowens mount? Uh, so if you're an RFI, if you're using RFI soft boxes, yes. Uh, you can buy uh, the Profoto um, S mount. So my, uh, just so you know, -mount. yeah, the Profoto speed ring S mount. So. Um, my uh, video lights here, the one that's on Caitlin, and the one that's here lighting me, are not uh, pro photo lights. They are uh, a different brand, but they are um, using pro photo soft boxes on them. So that's got a four foot RFI, the same soft box that we've been using here. That's what I light this with, and that has the Bowens RFI speed ring on it. Um, let's see. That's cool. So let's pull this stuff up. Um, I'd like to see a comparison with a D2 using both the flat front and dome. Yeah, we'll do a we'll do a we'll do a um a dome versus flat front. We've got that we've got that on the yeah, we've got that on the on the docket. Um this is mostly today about the depth of the stock box. So let's pull up the screen. Are we up? Killing me, smalls. You're gonna be surprised. Oh yeah. But guess what? kicking my leg into the air. So there's, there's no difference between the deep soft box. Which is which? Okay, deep soft box here, shallow soft box here. There's no difference. And that's again, because the light source is that front panel. It is not the rest of the soft box. So if anyone tells you, hey man, you should buy this deep soft box because it makes the light longer, you say not that's long. not true I because I saw Chris spill a bunch of nonsense <laughs> and tomfoolery, but he also had brought receipts yeah. and these are my receipts. <laughs> and I'm saying this not as like harshing on like other brands and stuff. We have a softbox that's technically a deep softbox. Like it's, We've got one, not, so I'd be, I'd be harsher on myself. But I don't, a lot of people throw around a lot of jargon, making them sound super sophisticated about their lighting when it's just, it's lighting is simple. It's not crazy. The diffusion panel is the light source. So if you have two four foot diffusion panel light sources, the light's gonna be the same. So again, 
there's subtle differences between what the RFI did and what the the soft zoom did. First and foremost, the soft zoom was a flat panel diffuser, which means the diffuser went all the way to the edge of the soft box. Whereas the RFI, the RF stands for recessed front. That panel is recessed a little bit. It has a little more edge control. Granted, we're working with a distance. Am I out of focus a little bit? Yeah, it's totally bothering <clears throat> me so much. Hold on, friends. There. Did you tap my face? Can you see his eyeballs yeah, she, there? Yeah. Okay. Probably don't want to. So the recessed front is going to give you some edge control, but we're backed up far enough, and Caitlin's close enough to the, the backdrop that that recessed front's not going to play too much. Um, again, if there's a difference, it's so subtle. The only thing that I could see off just obvious is the shadow on this leg here is a touch deeper. Um, can you use the ISO app and the old Air Remote TTL together? ISO app, I don't know what that is. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know what the ISO app is. Is it a light meter app? Is it a light meter app question? Pekka, this is for you. Um, Let me know what the ISO app is. I, I'm a dummy when it comes to a lot of this uh, stuff. Let's see, William, deep has more shadow. The, the only place that the deep feels like it has more shadow is here on the leg. Ooh. You could you could say that there is something here, but I don't know that this right here, I don't know that this here matters that much. Yeah. There might be There might be a hint of a contrast increase. Maybe, well, you might see it. but I definitely see it on the leg. Mm -hmm. If you if you compare the two legs, absolutely. But if you start looking at how like the the shadow demarcation here changes, it might be a touch more contrasty. But iOS. If, iOS. Oh, iOS. Yeah, did you say ISO? I think I did. I totally just. Lost Caitlin that. said I. That is so my fault. So I read apologize. read that one more time with iOS. Let's see. I mean, Propota Control app. Sorry about that. Um, iOS app thingy. Yeah. So reread the question. Can you use the iOS app and the old Air Remote TTL? TTL? No, you can't. That okay? Gotcha. So the Sorry. um, yeah. So can you use? <laughs> I learned how to read. <laughs> Sorry can't. about that, friend. She's just it's she's yeah. just learning English. It's not even it's it's not even her first language. Um, the first one is gibberish. But uh, so the Pro Photo Control app uh, can only work with Bluetooth devices. So the Connect and the Connect Pro, the older um, remote, which was like, I think we came out with that thing in 2013, uh, doesn't have Bluetooth in it. So no, if you want that option, you'll have to upgrade to a Connect or a Connect Pro. So, but I will say this, uh, if you have a B10, even if you're still using the other remote, the, the uh, Air TTL remote, if you have like a B10, uh, or an A2 or an A10, you can connect to those via the app and you can control the power that way. So uh, maybe that helps. If it's a B1, the B1 can't do it. Also doesn't have Bluetooth. D2 can't do it, doesn't have Bluetooth. So. What if the subject is architecture? Would you recommend a softbox or umbrella? I, all, uh, I was always told deep umbrella. Um, again, the upside for a deep umbrella is just it's going to give you more control, more focus. Uh, also, the... In an umbrella, the the light traveling from the light into the umbrella also plays into the inverse square law. So believe it or not, that actually makes the light wider. Um, it's a weird concept. My buddy Cliff taught me about it. I can't fully explain it, but the the light to the umbrella counts in the distance that you're using for the inverse square law. Uh, now, the deep umbrella is good because it's going to give you some focus, give you a little more edge control, whereas a shallow umbrella is not going to do that. Um, but it, it just depends on what you're trying to achieve. Like if you're trying to show texture of something, then maybe you actually want to use a hard light. Maybe you just want to use a bare bulb, especially if it's like a brick or a stucco facade or something like that. And you really want to show that off. You might want to use a hard light for that. A lot of times inside, I know some people use, um, soft boxes, but if the room has like white ceilings or white walls or stuff like a lot of people just bounce the light off into that and just make a big light source that way. So back to what we were talking about the deep has more shadow um john was saying the shadow could be the distance from the background it could be i mean we were um, we tried to keep my mark relatively the same but you know but was kicking, so we're yeah, yeah she's kicking things are moving yeah. so like i'm saying for the most part the main things that we're looking for are kind of like those lines of demarcation the actual feathering of the light 
and it's pretty darn similar. Granted, like like you're saying, the, the shadow of this could simply be Kate taking a step back. She was manage, uh, managing the actual production as well as is jumping back in there. We may have missed the mark a couple of times, but all in all, I wouldn't buy a softbox based on its depth is what I'm saying. Uh, now let's go and look at uh, some of the shots as we start to take off the diffusion panel. So here's single diffusion. So with the single diffusion, I will say that we are seeing a little bit more shadow. We're seeing a little bit more detail in those shadows. It could be a couple of different things. It could be the lesser of the diffusion around the main portion of that center diffusion panel that we showed you or around the outside of that center diffusion panel that we showed you. And the hot spot is still mitigated by that extra little dot in the middle because it doesn't really look like there's a hot spot, which is nice. It's doing exactly what it's made to do. But the, the deeper softbox has some more detail in the shadow. So uh, now let's go no diffusion. Is the difference between silver and white umbrellas with front diffusers one stop or more? So if you're going to use, uh, so the, the, the diffusion panel is a stop of light, so you're going to lose a stop. The silver is more efficient, so you're going to um, you're going to make up some of that inefficiency of the white umbrella uh, with uh, the silver back into the diffusion panel. So if you need to maintain some level of power, but you still want the diffusion. Uh, then yeah, use the silver with the diffusion panel. But the nice thing about the white umbrella with the diffusion panel is it's just really smooth, bounced into something that makes it even more smooth. So uh, it just depends on what you're trying to achieve. If if the the thing you're looking to achieve is the most efficiency with a soft modifier, go silver umbrella with the diffusion panel. Um, if you're looking for soft, 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 white, umbrella white diffusion panel if you have the room to lose a little bit of the power because you you will lose a little bit of power um, so with uh you can look at those for a second i'm gonna just i'm gonna talk about this so now once we start getting into the depth of the softbox and stuff like that you can really start to see how the the shape of the reflector here is starting to harden that light up some more it's starting to really put a focus beam first and foremost you can see it right here with the edge you can actually see the edge of the modifier making a vignette. <clears throat> and then you jump down here, you're starting to see the actual shadow and Kate. What, it's, what it is making is a double shadow. You can see the second shadow right here. And that's just because the light's bouncing all around inside that modifier. So you're getting kind of light rays and photons you know, shooting out at different directions. You're getting a lot more uh, detail in the shadows here. Still, I mean, if you go kind of here and look up underneath, sorry, Kate, we're getting close to your face. So nice. It is a harder line shadow under the nose, but it still feels relatively soft, which is kind of cool. It's a, it's a neat setup now with the, this is where the depth real, you can really start to see the difference in the depth of the modifier. So now you go over here to the four foot shallow, uh, a lot smoother on the actual, and I'm just gonna double check. Oh, I'm such a dumb dumb. Apologies. Is this with the single panel? Uh, this is with zero panels. Zero panels. Uh, I messed Sorry, up. I, I apologize. Yeah, I, I apologize. I messed up on the second one. I thought I selected the right one. I didn't. Here is the correct one. Ooh, you're a bad boy. I'm a bad boy. But again, it doesn't change the fact that you're starting to see more of that direct light. You're starting to see the edge of that modifier. Remember, you didn't see that just a second ago, even with the single diffusion panel. So now we've moved that light source deeper in there and the reflector is. So the thing that not the light source. Uh, the light, now that there's no diffusion panels in front of it, the actual flash head itself is the light source. These are just extra lights bouncing around the reflectors and stuff like that. So something to think about. Um, there are still, you're still getting kind of the double shadow here. Uh, it's a little more, it's a little more double shadowed here with the, the deeper reflector. And that's just because it has more time for the photons to bounce around and stuff like that. Uh, here, you're getting sort of a double shadow, but the main shadow that the center line creates or that the center light creates is there. And then the rest of the shadow right here is just kind of filled in by the light that's bounced around. So that's why this shadow starts to kind of like feather into something harder here is because this main shadow that you see here, that is created by the actual 
light itself, the bulb that's inside there itself. And then the feathering here in that shadow, that's from the light bouncing out of the uh, bouncing around the flector. So that's the same thing here. So this main shadow here is made by Kate. And then the, the little demarcation line right here, this little feather, that's from the light kind of bouncing around. So hopefully um, that makes sense. David says, I think you should show um, edge of the light using the soft zoom reflector in the RFI soft box. Sometimes I use deep soft boxes to show strong edges between light and the shadow. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to read that again. Cause I'm not- Yeah, I sometimes misread things too. But sorry, uh, you wanna, Okay, you can see me over there. So, yeah, oh no, you can't see me over there. Um, it says, I think you should show edge of the light using the soft zoom reflector and the RFI softbox. Sometimes I use a deep softbox to show strong edge between the light and the shadow. Jacob, could you explain that to me? Just because I'm, I'm a, a dumb dumb, and I could be totally missing it's that. Reading that a little um, bit. And it's not making hundred percent. Are you asking me to like feather the light uh, to show the actual edge of the light itself? Do you want to actually see the 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 cutoff line? Just tell me what you're looking for. And um, uh, we have a couple people wanting to um, uh, double back to the question about flipping the hair motion. I still don't know the answer to this question, the hair being in focus completely when being flipped okay. in motion. So, think, so, so people are asking about, they're not understanding why hair, uh, you can come off of the, my computer screen, it's fine. Oh, that's way too close to me, I'm gonna back up some. <laughs> So, yeah, so, something. So the um, the reason that you can freeze hair, the reason that you stop hair's motion, has nothing to do with your camera shutter speed. So in in flash photography, not talking about high speed sync, we're talking about standard flash below your sync speed. Your flash is now your shutter. So think of it like this. Let's say we're in a pitch black room and we're going to, we're just, gonna, I think we're just going to have to do this to, to show people. I think we're practically going to have to do a live around this, but say you're in a pitch black room, bulb mode on your camera. So bulb mode means you press the trigger and it keeps the shutter open indefinitely until you let it go. So it's trying to let light in, but it's just dark. There's nothing happening, right? It's the pitch black room. Cool. We've established that. So if I wave my hand in a pitch black room, and the flash goes off and it's a really fast flash duration. So say your camera only goes to one eight thousandth of a second shutter speed. My Pro 11 here in a T5 mode, and we'll have to get into that deeper. This is why we'll save it for another day. But in T5 mode is getting one eighty thousandth of a second, 10 times faster than your shutter speed is. So if I'm the fastest flash duration I can do on this thing in this pitch black room, even though your shutter is open for five seconds, my light is only on for one eighty thousandth of a second, if that makes sense. So this gets frozen. Whereas if the light was a constant light and it was on like this, you would see this whole motion blur because the light's on for a long time. It's a really, so like if you think about it right now, this constant light, you can see everything that I'm doing. It's an infinite flash duration. It's not even flashing. The light is just on all the time. Whereas my flash can be instantaneous. So hopefully that explains that. So even though the hair is flipping and there's motion happening and your camera is not set to a super fast shutter speed, the light is faster than your camera is, if that makes sense. So that's what flash duration is all about. Um, did Jacob, did J Jacob yeah, expand for me? I'm gonna um, re-explain it in just a second. So it's cool. something we popping in. Um, cool. Let's see, did I miss anything? If I missed your question, pop it down at the bottom again. And Thank you for all the know. questions too. Yeah, you, really, really good it, stuff. It makes it funner when we have the questions. Okay, yeah. here comes Jacob. You're gonna read Sorry, it. I'm gonna read Jacob's question again. <laughs> he goes, deep soft boxes show their advantages mainly without diffusion because they can be used as large reflectors. Perfect with a strongly defined edge between light and shadow, deep soft boxes also have more rods, so the shadow edge is smoother than our RFI soft box, which has eight rods. I thought I shot, showed that, Jacob, with the last two images. Um, flip up my screen one more time, Jacob. Maybe maybe you missed this. Yeah just, flip up, yeah, just flip up my images, there we go. So these images here, make sure that I'm actually in the screen here. Cool, so these images here are no diffusion on both the boxes. So here is, like you were saying, with the larger reflector with more rods, a more round, smooth. Um, it's manually focused right now. Um, 
Um, this one is the, the soft zoom, so more rods, deeper box. Uh, and the, again, the shadows are smooth. I, I mean, just in comparison to the RFI, I, if this is what you're talking about as far as the edges of the shadows, um, yeah, I mean, you can, it, the, the, the difference is, is pretty telling. I mean, you're definitely getting a sharper, a more, um, you're definitely getting, you know, more of a focused shadow here. Whereas here it kind of feathers off a little bit more with the RFI, uh, at least from what I'm seeing. Um, hotspot wise, I mean, I guess you would expect there to be a little bit more of a hotspot because it's a hard light coming straight out, but it's not too bad. Um, actually don't really even see a hot spot. It, it looks like it kept everything relatively smooth. Maybe even here, if you look towards, uh, Caitlin's chest is probably a little more, uh, a little more glisteny, a little more punchy, especially maybe even here. Granted this, you know, could be the hair blocking, but around here, the forehead, uh, the light characteristics, yeah. maybe even a little punchier here, cheekbones. Yeah. You can look here on the cheekbones too. Here, let's actually just zoom in, make this simpler instead of, there you go, Caitlin, everyone can see if you have cavities. Oh. I brush my teeth. But no, I mean you can you can definitely see here. There's uh, with the deep saw uh, the deep box with no diffusion. There's uh, definitely a lot more sparkle on the skin. Uh, it's there's it's got a little crispness here, but there's it's definitely a little bit more sparkly, a little more crispy here with the um, the deeper box. Now if we go down here to like the shadows, try to kind of zoom in tighter on the shadows. There we go. Come on. There we go. Um, the shadow on the RFI is a little bit smoother. I mean, there is still a double shadow there, but the double shadow on the deeper softbox is definitely a lot more pronounced. Uh, you can, I mean, you can see bop, and then you can see another pretty defined line right there. Uh, whereas the RFI, you have this super defined line, but it feathers out nicely. Um, so it might be something you want to think about whenever you're thinking about going to softbox like that. I don't know if that if that says what your what your experience has been with Jacob, but thanks for thanks for the input. Really, really appreciate it. Um, would you uh, would you say what each photo uses again? Yeah, hundred percent. Here, so let's zoom out, zoom out. Uh, let's do this. I'm gonna just gonna, it might get uh, get rid of my face and just pull up the the screen just because I'm gonna pull up all the images. So. Yes, lots of, lots of kicks. Lots of weirdness. Lots of weirdness. So hopefully, oh. hopefully this lays it out in a way that helps. Yeah. So these top three images here are the soft zoom. So the, or so essentially the deep soft box. Uh, the bottom uh, images here are the shallow soft box. So the R5 forefoot. Um, hopefully, that shows you something with them in comparison. Uh, for the most part. Uh, the left looks a little <clears throat> brighter. What is that? The left looks a little brighter. Um, it could just be, uh, I mean, everything is um, metered to, to F8 on the money. So <laughs> the exposure is all the same. The only thing that I could think that maybe makes the left side look brighter than the, the right side is the fact that the right side is starting to vignette out, especially right here. Uh, right here with the double diffusion, you're getting more coverage. So, mm -hmm. so but... For the most part, I wouldn't put too much stock in whether your softbox is deep or shallow if you're using it as a traditional softbox. Now, it, just like Jacob was saying too, uh, if you use your softboxes in the manner that we were showing where you start removing diffusion, especially if you go no diffusion, then you can start putting a lot more stock into the depth of your softboxes. That's going to change the characteristic of the light because again, the light once the diffusion's removed, the light source is the light itself. Whereas when there's diffusion, the light source is the diffusion. So um, I don't know if I said this one a lot. Is um, it would be great to see a comparison with the, the bare heads, no soft boxes on. Oh, you want to see straight straight flash? So the upside is I can only have to take one image that way. Um, here, let's do it. That's a pretty that's a pretty easy shot to take. So someone wants to, someone wants to see what the pro head looks like with nothing on it whatsoever. So we'll do that right now. Cool. Let's just make sure. There we go. Let's put this out of the way. Oh yeah, no, I moved my camera. I'll have to kind of shimmy it back to relatively the same position. Cool. Okay. <clears throat> I've gotten everybody's questions. Cool. So the one thing that you're going to see happen here is since my room has white walls, the light is going to be pretty even all around. Um, 
but it'll still be a hard light source. And that's just because it's going to do a really good job of uh, making a room fill. I'm ready for you when you're ready. Yep. You gotta. I'm just gonna have to. I'm gonna have to fight a little bit with this. Yeah. It's not gonna be the exact same position. Let's get metered real quick just for consistency, and then we're gonna get out of here. Cause you have stuff to do. I have stuff to do. You got some pictures to take. And I know that you probably don't want to hear my mouth running too much longer. Yeah, we need some more. More time. Hold on. Weird. Uh, was that light on the whole time? Hang on a second. I must have just accidentally kicked it on. Turn that one off. There we go. Okay. That's crazy. The uh, the distance that we're at right now is literally. Come on, come back to me. Oh, I'm doing the wrong thing. I want to see the distance that we're at is the exact same as the power setting. Oh, and that, I was dead wrong on that one though. Well, apparently I'm a liar. There we go. I fade on money. Perfect. I'm actually glad this question came up. I wanted to see what the like. Well then why didn't you say something? Let me explain. Here we go. Three, two, one. Cool. So the upside for this is you're gonna get that's a cooler image. Yeah. So the upside for this is is you're with nothing on there. So I'll um I'll show you all three. The upside for this is you're getting a single light source for the most part. And so you're going to get a solid shadow, which is really, really nice. Again, it's filled in really well because it's um, using the entire room as a fill. So you're bouncing off all these white ceilings, white walls. It's very, very cool. So if you want to compare them, so let's say there's that one, hard light, that one, hard light, and then this one. So here are kind of the three. Um, my camera composition changed a little bit, but you can see you know, what we're working with for the most part. Um, because the light's bouncing around everywhere bare head, you're getting a lot cleaner. If you look at the background, it's a lot cleaner. The shadow is solid. There's no double shadows. Whereas the reflector, the edges of the reflector are going to start introducing secondary shadows with, um, with that, that goes the same with, um, even some of the hard reflectors. So some of the hard reflectors can also introduce, uh, secondary shadows. So something to keep in mind. So hopefully that answered all the questions for everyone. Um, you know, not trying to, you know, tell you whether or not your softbox is right or wrong, but just don't put too much stock into some people trying to say certain things. Just remember. Sometimes you got to feel it out yourself. Sometimes you got to feel it out yourself. And just sometimes the, yeah. the light rules are the same. So your, um, the diffusion panel on a softbox is the light source, not the light. Okay. So it doesn't matter about the depth. Again, what we learned, if you're using a softbox in a traditional manner, don't put any stock in its depth, okay? At least if you're gonna put some stock into it, don't put that much stock into it, okay, cool. Maybe maybe there's, someone's told you something that makes a little more sense. What I'm telling you is the diffusion panel is your light source. Now, if you're gonna work with these things in a manner where you don't use the diffusion panels, then yes, the depth matters. So that's the, the key takeaway. Uh, but this is a really, really fun experiment. It's fun to, to play with the lighting. It's always fun to do this stuff. The questions, so awesome. Thank you all so much for the questions. If you have any other questions, anything else you'd like to see, we're going to dive deeper into flash duration uh, coming up soon. But if there's anything that you'd like to see, let me know. Send me a DM. Shoot Pro Photo DM. They'll send it over to me. Uh, but you can find me on, like, if you want to hit me up on, like, Instagram or something like that, that's usually where I chat with people. Um, it's the Chris Fain, at the Chris Fain. Uh, pretty simple and uh, awesome. So hopefully you have an awesome rest of your week. Uh, reach out to us if you need anything, and we will see you next time. Peace out, everybody. I'm always, I'm going to stand here awkwardly as yeah, Caitlin's sorry, typing to you. Typing. I peaced out, and then Caitlin didn't ready? even leave it. So okay, ready? later.